Hello and welcome to another video. And this one, as the title would suggest, I am looking at the 1991 Formula One Grand Prix season. A season that I remember very well. I would have been 20 at the time. And I remember it being a very exciting season. Lots of ups and downs. The big um, move that year between teams was, of course, Nigel Mansell going back to Williams, where he had enjoyed a lot of success. Um, particularly in 1986 and 1987, runner-up in both of those championships. So a lot of success, but heartbreak as well. Um, and he left Ferrari after two seasons at Ferrari, and went back to Williams. I forget the, uh, the name of the Williams car that year. Was it the F14? Or was that 1992? The F14. Anyway, this season in 1991, we were hoping for big things from Mansell, but we were worried about the uh, reliability of the Williams because it was a totally new car. There were the normal 16 races. That was the norm back in those days. Every single year was 16 races. And pretty much the same races every year. Um, although this year, and I think was it the last previous year as well, um, we had the USA Grand Prix at Phoenix. Yeah, I think that was in 1990 and 1991. And that kick-started the season. And it also kick-started what would be um, a bit of a pattern for most of the year and that was Senna winning and Mansell's car breaking down. Senna actually went on in his McLaren to win the first four races which was unprecedented I don't think that had happened before but he won in USA, Brazil, San Marino and Monaco. First, 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 first. And uh, all Mansell, who was considered Senna's main title rival, uh, title rival that year, all Mansell managed was a second place at Monaco. He retired from the other three races. So after four races, Senna was on 40 points. Mansell was on six. <laughs> this was also the first year that um, you got 10 points for a win, as opposed to nine. That just helped send all the more so. So I remember thinking after Monaco's game over, the championship's over already. We're one quarter of the way through the championship and Mansell has a mass, um, Senna has a massive lead. But the uh, Williams was clearly very quick. It was just a question of, just like Mansell in the Ferrari days, it was just a question of reliability all the time. Um, Ricardo Patrese, Nigel Mansell's teammate in the Williams, was driving very well. Uh, he was second in Brazil. Um, he nearly won the race because uh, Senna was having problems with his car. He nearly lost his home race, but Patrese was not quite able to catch him. Um, so yeah, Patrese was second there. So I think Mansell and Patrese both had six points at this point. But the, I remember the next race 
Oh my goodness. The Canadian Grand Prix at Montreal. Uh, this one uh, still gives me nightmares now, which is a bit silly. It doesn't really. Uh, but at the time, I remember being uh, most distressed um, by what had happened to Mansell. Uh, Mansell led the race, was leading massively, uh, uh, had a massive lead over Nelson Piquet of one minute. Nelson Piquet in the Benetton, Benetton Ford. And he was leading by um, a full minute. Uh, and then with, oh dear, about maybe a quarter of the last lap to go, his car suddenly broke down. Broke down. Uh, it's up in the air exactly what happened. Some people have accused Mansell of turning the engine off because he was waving at the crowd. Um, but th there have been also plenty of people saying that's not possible. Um, and uh, it just broke down. But um, anyway, because the car did, they did manage to get the car going again after the race. But who knows? I mean, it's 50-50. Some people say he accidentally switched the engine off. Uh, some people say that couldn't have happened, so I don't know. Anyway, he retired. He didn't... Re did he retire? Yeah, he did retire. But because it was the last lap, and he was a lap ahead of a lot of people, he, he was actually listed as being in sixth place. So he just got uh, one point. <laughs> Terrible. Awful. Instead of the ten that he was about to get. Uh, Senna had retired from that race, so it would have been a... A great pullback in points towards Senna. Um, had he managed to win, oh, that was just a de devastating result for, for Nigel. That was devastating. Um, and the next race was, was almost as bad. So that was the Canadian Grand Prix. And the next race, so let's just write down here, actually. I've put down Senna. 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 Canada was Piquet. The Mexican Grand Prix, Mansell was again super duper quick. I can't remember who was on pole for Mexico, but it was it was a race that was dominated by the Williams. Suddenly the Williams were looking really good at long last. Their reliability seemed to be getting a bit better. Um, because Patrese at least had been second in, in the Canadian Grand Prix. Um, but in Mexico, Mansell yet it once again had a problem with his car. And the Williams were one too, but Patrese was way out in front. Um, he was about half a minute in front of Mansell when suddenly Mansell's car started working properly again. I can't remember what the problem was now. Um, something to do with the, I don't know, actually. Uh, but anyway, he wasn't able to get good speed. It wasn't a terminal problem he had. He just couldn't get proper speed. Uh, and it suddenly started to come good with about 20 laps to go. But he was half a minute behind Patrese. But he absolutely drove a blinder. Chased down Patrese. And at the finish line, he crossed the line one second behind his teammate Ricardo Patrese. So Patrese was, got the win, um, basically. I remember being uh, irritated by that as well, of course, because that should have been a Mansell win. So, and I think Senna was third in that race. So now Senna had 44 points. Patrese was second in the championship on 20 points. And third was Mansell on 13. Um, I remember a lot of the talk being about how Ricardo Patrese was going to be the uh, uh, was going to be the, the big threat to uh, Senna in the championship and not Mansell. Uh, I disagreed totally, even though Patrese was driving very well. Uh, Mansell was definitely as soon as Mansell could shake off this bad luck, it was clear that Mansell was going to come charging through the championship. Sure enough, that's what happened. French Grand Prix was won by Mansell at long last. 
I remember him chasing down Alan Prost in his Ferrari and uh, passing him with only a few laps to go. Uh, that was Prost's one big chance to win a race that year, his home race. And uh, But Mansell took it off him. I remember being very nervous in the last few laps of that race. Um, but M uh, Mansell's car, for some reason, didn't break down or get hit by a falling tree or something with a couple of laps to go. Then we had the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Now, I went to the British Grand Prix that year. So I watched Nigel Mansell come home, romp home to victory again. Ahead of uh, uh, Senna, who ran out of fuel, I think, on the last lap. I think he ended up fourth. And um, he ran, and uh, I think Mansell, yeah, Mansell stopped and gave him a lift. Or was that 1992? He did that, I can't remember. I think it was 91. He stopped and Senna climbed onto, you can't imagine that happening now, can you? <laughs> Health and safety. But Senna climbed onto his car and Mansell drove off with Senna, sitting on top of his car. Uh, Mansell having stopped to pick him up. And then we went to the German Grand Prix. Again, another blasting victory for Nigel Mansell and his Williams. They were now only separated by eight points. I think Senna had, um, was it 51 points? Mansell had 43. Suddenly, the championship was very much so on. Senna 51, Mansell 43 from nowhere. Mansell, just as I thought, as I knew would happen. Um, Mansell, and I'm not just saying that in hindsight. <laughs> I remember thinking at the time after the Mexican Grand Prix, yes, Patrese's in second in the championship, but Mansell was going to come charging through. And straight away he did. Um, so all of a sudden Mensa was right there. However, however, Hungary and Belgium. Hungary was, I think um, Senna got pole and Senna won. Okay, not, and Mensa was second. Okay, not devastating. The gap now 12 points. However, the next one was the big one. That was the killer, the next race. Won by Ayrton and Senna, but Mansell had been leading. He was on pole. He had a comfortable lead. It was heading towards victory. His car broke down. Senna scores ten points. Mansell scores zero. So suddenly, it's Senna seventy-one. Uh, Mansell uh, was on. Uh, what was he on? Forty-nine. So suddenly, look at that, two races ago, eight point gap. Now suddenly, 22 point gap. I was back to thinking championships all over again. 10, 11, so that was 11, that was 11 rounds. And we still had uh, Italy, Portugal, Spain, Japan and Australia to go. The Italian Grand Prix, I can't remember much about the Italian Grand Prix. I, I think it was a 1-2 for, for Williams, but anyway, it was a storming win for Mansell. Great, I can't remember where Senna finished. Portuguese Grand Prix should have been a win for Mansell. He was totally dominant again, but he did something. What did he do? Did he reverse in the pits or something? Oh, no, 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 I know what he did. He, um, I think he... Um, he was coming out of the pits, it was just like in 1989 when he had that disqualification in the Ferrari. The same, the same, no, was that 1990 or 1989? Uh, no, 1989, I think it was, Portugal 1989. Uh, the same thing, he got disqualified after crashing into Senna and he had, uh, he just had lots of problems basically. Um, he reversed in the pit lane. Uh, and then when he was disqualified, he didn't react quick enough and crashed into Senna and, and then was given a one or two race ban, I think. Same thing again, Portuguese Grand Prix. Same thing again, a problem in the pit lane. This time his wheel came off. And um, that was the end of his race. His wheel came off at the end of the pit lane. Patrese came through 
to win the race, which would have been a comfortable Mansell victory. All going wrong for Mansell. Spanish Grand Prix. Not a comfortable win, a great win. And it, the, the Spanish Grand Prix for Mansell, it's famous for having that... Um, um, that shot of Senna and Mansell next to each other, almost touching wheels, sparks flying everywhere. Anyone who's a fan of Formula One would have seen that clip and not known necessarily what Grand Prix it was from. It's always shown Senna and Mansell next to each other, almost touching wheels, um, sparks everywhere as they fly down the straight in Barcelona. Well, that was from this race, the Spanish Grand Prix. I don't think, Man from what I remember, I don't think um, Mansell was passing for the lead. I think he was, it was sort of like halfway through the race and there were uh, there were other cars in front at the time that hadn't had a pit stop and things like that. But it was nevertheless treated as, as basically a battle for the, for the race win. Mansell got it. I can't remember where Senna finished, but going into Japan, I know that Senna still had a healthy lead. And um, I think, uh, yeah, Mansell, did he spin? Yeah, I remember now, actually, he went into the gravel trap. I've got this image in my head. This is all going from memory of him going wide into a corner and ending up in a gravel trap. I think he's, he had problems with his car again. And that was it. And that retirement lost him the championship. Senna was champion. But then the slightly not controversial, but not not a, a, an unpopular thing basically happened then and that was that uh, Senna pulled over to what, uh, at the finishing line and let his teammate who had been invisible all year Gerhard Berger he let Berger cross the line to win the race Berger has always thanked Senna for that has always said oh you know thank you but he must as a racer he must have hated that really uh, being gifted a win someone pulling over that's not how you want to win a race your teammate giving it to you um you know uh, that's not really what you want is it it's great if it's for the championship um but if it's just a one-off race like that um it was nice of senna to do it but i personally wouldn't have liked that um so we went to Australia, the championship was already won by Senna, and I think Senna won the race now. I think the 1991 Australian Grand Prix was a, a wet race. I think it only lasted about 16 laps or something. Uh, Senna winning Mansell second, I believe. So that meant the championship positions were Senna from 96, his third world championship, Mansell, runner-up for the third time so the third championship for Senna and the third runner-up spot in a championship for Mansell after 1986 and 1987 third was Patrese on 53 fourth was Gerhard Berger on 43 um, there you have it Oh, who won the Constructors' Championship? Well, it would have been either... So, um, what would that have been then? Uh, 139. Uh, and then that would have been 125. So, McLaren won the Constructors' Championship as well. 139 points to 125. I did do that correctly, didn't I? Yeah. There you have it, the 1991 Formula One season. Lots of ups, lots of downs, regardless of who you were supporting. But a really exciting championship all the way through. Okay, thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to subscribe, uh, please do so. And um, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.